Uh, our next presenter uh, is Greg Avola. Uh, and, <laughs> and he's the creator of one of my favorite apps and probably a favorite app of a lot of people here, especially on the PhoneGap team, uh, Untapped. All right. OK. Let's start this thing. All right, so who here has heard of Untap? Raise your hand. Wow, my mom's going to be really happy about that. Um, so what I want to talk about today is how PhoneGap pretty much made Untap what it is today, as I like to call the perfect pint. OK, so who is this goofball uh, with three L's in a ball? But that doesn't matter. Um, so I'm the co-founder and the lead developer of Untapped. Uh, we founded the service last in 2010. Uh, I live in New York City, but I'm born and raised in Boston, so that doesn't really make any relevance here. I could say things like Red Sox, but that doesn't really fit here, so we'll skip that. Uh, I specialize in PHP, uh, JavaScript, and MySQL, which is the uh, technology stack for Untapped. We also use Memcache and Redis. Uh, and my claim to fame, if Untapped wasn't my claim to fame, I was on Man vs. Food for nine seconds in 2010 with a line that my friends still text me from time to time today. I don't know if they're going to finish this pizza. It looks too big. That was my line right there, and that what it was. If you want to see it, if you're that bored with your life, you just go to my website, gregavola.me. It's right there. So that, that's all I have to say about that. So first of all, what is Untapped? Uh, it's basically coined by the community the four square for beer. It's an app that allows you to check in your beer optionally add your location, and then share with all your friends and make them extremely jealous of drinking during the day. So it's, uh, it's a great, great tool. We launched in October of 2010. We're only a team of two. We're both part-time on this project. Uh, well, I'd like say we're part-time. We don't do it full-time, although it seems like we do it sometimes. Um, we have 200,000 registered users on the application. Uh, and we just recently crossed 10 million check-ins. So we have a lot of people that Love to drink. I think I pulled a, a, a report last month. The average user on Untapped in the last month drinks 18 beers a month. That's a lot. Well, I mean, it's some people, not to me. But um, so, with uh, with PhoneGap, we were able to add in uploaded photos, which is a major requested feature. We've, we added that in about seven months ago when we launched in October. We already have more than a half million photos been uploaded of beer-related photos. I stress that. Um, we're a mobile web first, and then we're a native platform, as I mentioned. We launched in October of 2011. And just on Tuesday, we launched version two of our product, which has gotten a lot of positive feedback. So it's really much better than the first one. Um, social integration with Foursquare, Twitter, and Facebook. If you're, if you're an app and you don't have these in your, in your platform, it's not really an app. Um, and then the big thing that everyone loves are social achievement with badges, just like Foursquare. We give you badges for doing certain activities, drinking at a beach, drinking at a college, you know, stuff like that. It really kind of drives the engagement on the site. So I want to talk a little bit about our story and how we got into PhoneGap, how we got into Untap. So I found this really weird, creepy picture of this kid. So we had this idea uh, that we wanted to think about industries that needed to be disrupted. And beer was a very social industry, but it never really kind of came into fruition. So we said, why don't we make something like Twitter and Facebook for beer? And that's kind of how it started. And then I add that because everybody else had stuff on their slides about stuff like that. So we started out, we launched in October 2010 with a basic, this is the first version we came out with, web only, mobile web. So we, we started out with HTML5 powered web app. The best thing about this is that we worked on BlackBerry 6, iOS, WebOS, Android on day one. A lot of apps come out on one platform, and unless you're Instagram, it doesn't work. So you know, we really were able to find a really good medium of people that wanted to use our product and could only open up their phone and quickly go to the site. Uh, when I first met Brian, actually, he told me this really good story about how the web is your biggest market marketplace. So there's other stores out there, uh, app store and marketplace, but the web is something that you can just tell someone have web app, just go to the address, and you're there, and you're done. So it's a good opportunity for us to reach multiple platforms day one. We didn't use any custom design. I mean, we didn't use any uh, predefined uh, style sheets like a jQuery mobile or a Seneca Touch. Because honestly, when we first built this, it wasn't ready yet. They were still in early, early alpha, and we weren't comfortable with it. We actually used jQuery on our mobile, which is not a good thing 
to use on a mobile browser because of all the IE stuff that's in there that you'll never really need to touch. But it was a mistake and it works out. Uh, social integration on day one, you know, Twitter and Facebook, as you can see by the screenshot, uh, helped us kind of get um, yeah, kind of word out. And then my favorite thing is that we have these badges that are kind of a little bit extraneous at this point. But on day one, you only had to do one of the requirements to get all the badges. So you pretty much pissed off a lot of people on the Twitter feed by unlocking these things left and right. Um, people testing the app in the morning, they get the top of the morning badge really early, so it was not a good idea. So growth is good. So we're, we're, we're gaining the user base on Untapped over the, over the course of almost a full year. The big blip in the, in the front was uh, a Mashable article that was written about Untapped, and it happened at 2 in the morning Eastern time. I did not get any sleep that night at all uh, maintaining the servers. We were still on shared hosting. <laughs> with, uh, that was bad. Um, so user, it's growth is good. We're really happy about it. But people want native apps. All these requests came in from users on our support site saying things like, you don't have an app in the store. I want offline access mode. You know, all this ridiculous you know, stuff, you know, like the first one, gay, no app in store. I mean, I don't understand that one. But um, anyway, so people want native apps. So then the other problem, people are confused about web apps. They're not sure what is the idea here. They love web apps, but where can I download? That's the biggest problem we have. We met somebody at a party at a networking event. We said to them, we're untapped. This is how you get to it. You just open up your browser, type in untapped.com, and I've already lost them. I've already lost them at that point. So they're confused on how, on, on how to do it. If it's an app, everyone thinks you need to download it. And the other problem is that we're developers. <laughs> we're not iOS developers. We're not Android. We just love to code. All right? And that's just the way that we kind of we run a role in a small company. We don't have the people on staff to have all these different development platforms like iOS or Android. And like I mentioned, we're a small team from no funding. We, people come up to us and said, we want to build you an Android app. You know, here's, you know, you guys, I know you guys are, you know, new, but we're going to cut you a deal. 35 grand. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. 35 grand. I said, no, no, okay. Maybe I must be a little cheaper. Well, what's your growth at? 45 grand, even more. Can't afford that. Can't even afford to pay my rent sometimes. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so we, we, we put the pros and cons together of why we want to have mobile web, why we don't want to have mobile web. This has kind of been talked about today. Uh, it's easy development for us. It was cheaper because we just did it. Uh, multiple platforms. Some native components, you have HTML5 to kind of drive some of the geolocation elements. Fast updates, which I love. You're able to push out features right then and there. You don't have to worry about app source submission. Um, but then you have the con side, the lack of exposure that I talked about. People weren't knowing how to find you, how to discover you. Um, you can't connect to the camera or the contacts and some sort of network connection sometimes. That's a big feature for us. We want to be able to pull in photos. And then the knowledge barrier, like I talked about before. People just don't understand web apps. I, I wish that it would be a more common terminology, but it's just not there yet. So obviously, our solution was none other than the popular folks at PhoneGap to provide their solution to help us build our product on the native platform. So what we were able to do is take all of our code. This took literally 36 hours of a coding session to take our entire web app and put it on, on a native platform. And, and just like some of the other people that have talked today, the first step is the easiest. You can get your app out there. People get, can use it. You're going to run into bugs here and there with different versions of Android, which has already been discussed. But it was really easy for us to do. And, and the, the, the residual effect of this was amazing, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, people always ask, why PhoneGap? Why, should, why would I use PhoneGap? There are a lot of other ones out there that we won't discuss, because they're not even worth discussing. Um, PhoneGap is open source and free for someone that can't afford to pay his rent every month. This is very important when you're building a business. Open source and free It's very important. Using existing knowledge without hiring multiple teams for each platform, another important piece. I already know HTML5. I wrote the mobile app. So let's decide to, to move that to different platforms. And it's really that easy. Obviously, a thriving community, we wouldn't be here today if there wasn't a thriving community. And plugins. This is one of my favorite things about PhoneGap. We can easily add plugins such as native controls, um, you know, different things to make it look and feel more native to add more functionality to it. So what happened after we, we put our native app out? That flip in the middle, that was the day we released on Tap 1.0 in the PhoneGap Android, uh, Android and iPhone. We signed up 25,000 users in that month alone of October of last year. 
We averaged around 400 a month before that. So amazing amount of exposure. We increased our check-in count per day, every single day, by 300% for the next four months. It was pretty crazy. And then my fiance took a screenshot, which I can't find, but she said that Untap was the top 50 app in social networks on launch day. I don't believe her. I think she's trying to make me feel better. But that's what she said, and I'm going to put it on this slide to make myself feel better. So thank you. Thank you. So, so after all this process, and you know, we've talked about some of the, the bugs with the web kit and whatnot, some of the lessons that I've learned from moving from a web, mobile web version to a native application is really along the ideas of you're building an app, not a website. And what I mean by that is that most people build websites with module loading screens. You're dependent upon a Wi-Fi connection. Um, you really have to build an app like Instagram or other apps that do a lot of stuff in the background. If you focus your attention on that and not showing up loading symbols every five seconds for the user, you're going to have a much better experience. One of the mistakes we made in Untap, the, the mobile version, is that we actually didn't have an API. We just kind of threw HTML together and served it back to the client. This is not good. This is very bad. So I recommend using JavaScript template engines and, and then being able to reserve stuff as JSON and then put it into the actual web view. Understanding the platform before designing. This is really important to keep the kind of design standards that you have um, for the different platforms. For iOS, uh, or if it's Android version on the left you see here, this is how it looks normally on Android apps. You have a top navigation or an action bar, and then you also have your, your, your very top navigation uh, point. On iOS, we flipped it down so there's a bottom tab bar that kept it consistent with the design. Most times you see a lot of people that want to say, oh, phone gap, great, I'm just going to take the same code and I'm going to put it all across my four platforms that I want to do. Take a little consideration, try to change up the design a little bit. Users will be a lot more appreciative of this and they'll thank you for making their app look and feel just like their other ones they have on their phone. And most importantly, because I've made a lot of mistakes and I'm sure developers have as well, you got to test, test, test. A lot of programmers or a lot of developers say, hey, you know, a web app, I can just fix it when I want. Apple's taking about five business days to approve your request. We, have, we got rejected at least four or five times before this went out. So you have to make sure that you, you really test your product uh, fully before you get it out, obviously. People notice that. So. Um, so that's kind of the end of my presentation. If anyone has any questions, I tweeted a couple days ago that I'm giving away free untapped stickers. So if you see me or now you know what I look like, just, just hound me, run me over, and I'll, and I'll get you some stickers. And uh, if you're interested in any other questions, I'll be around and... When you're drinking the beer, make sure you check in on Untapped. Okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>